Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. I have seven wines in front of me, uh, five from France, two from Spain. Common theme, Grenache, my wife's favourite grape. Um, first one, we are in, uh, are we in Provence here? No, it's, uh, it's from Domaine uh, Sacha, or uh, bottled for Sacha Lachine, uh, who, uh, who has got a place in Provence. Uh, probably makes the world's best rosé there, uh, Chateau d'Esclan. Uh, but this is Vin de France, so it's a little bit, a little bit from here, a little bit from there. 40% Grenache, but also 40% Cabernet Sauvignon, 10 Merlot, 10 Syrah, and it's called Le Coq Rouge. Give it a whirl. Well, it smells like a, a, a juicy, sappy, almost chillable type of red wine. Uh, it's got quite bouncy black currant and berry fruit. Um, it doesn't smell like it's going to be incredibly complex, but um, pretty crowd-pleasing style. And there's a little bit of that um, bouncy, um, even slightly bubbled gummy character that says to me, carbonic maceration. If, if, if that reminds anyone of Beaujolais, that's the character they're picking up there. Problems with it, maybe it's all up front and lacks a little bit of, uh, uh, of, of juicy drinkability behind it. Because uh, the, the fruit bounces into your mouth and then it goes a bit dry. And um, I almost wish they'd, uh, they'd left a little bit more Grenache in and, uh, and uh, I did, I did, yeah, less Cabernet Sauvignon. It's okay. Um, what I call summer's day red. You can almost chill that slightly. Um, Next one, André Brunel, Van de Pays de Vaucluse, 2010. Well, there's a warmth and juicy spice here that, uh, that is very rony, and, uh, but without any of that rony, gam um, gamey, animal meatiness that, uh, that can show a slightly faulty wine. This smells like it's got freshness, punchy, dark fruit flavours, and um, it smells like it's going to be um, uh, almost, again, I was talking about summer red on the first one. Uh, this feels like a, a, a wine that's not going to assault you, and it doesn't really need to, uh, uh, to, to wait to the depths of winter to really enjoy it. But um, it smells like it's got quite a, quite a bit of personality to it. Bit of tar, bit of berry, and some plum, even a slight hint of cocoa in there. Uh, what I like about it is it's got that juicy fruit, but it's also got freshness. And um, it, it's a different sort of, it, it doesn't have that, uh, that uh, slightly green bite that uh, the Cabernet Sauvignon dominated Le Coq Rouge had. Here it feels satisfying, um, juicy, and um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be, so, it, it's come straight from my slightly cool cellar. Looking good at that temperature, so decent for summer, but also hearty enough for winter as well. Nice, have your cake and eat it. Let's see whether that's the case on these two Côte de Rhone. First one is uh, La Grange Saint-Martin, Reserve Côte de Rhone, uh, par Perrin et Fils. Uh, Perrins are the people behind uh, Chateau de Beaucastel. Uh, this isn't declassified Beaucastel by any means. It's been, but it's been created by the family Perrin. Uh, blah, 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 Grenache, Syrah, Mourvedre, Sanso and others. So we're a year older here, and um, so a, first thing I notice, it feels like a, a warmer, heartier, more generous wine. Um, and uh, it, it, it's got more spice, it's got more fruit, it's got more plushness. And the fruit here, it's on the cherries, the blackberries, black cherries, uh, blackberries, and uh, yeah, this, this, this um, I mean, Languedoc is the place that people talk about the Garrigue, but here there is a, a, a definite southern herbiness coming through. But there's also um, touches of tar, and um, Syrah, I don't know how much Syrah there is in the blend, but Syrah often, uh, in, in the Rhone, I get this orange peel character, and there's, there's something like that. Uh, crystallised orange peel, one of those things that you would probably only taste at Christmas. But that character is coming through strongly. And um, uh, nice mix, again, of heartiness, but with freshness too. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see that still going strong, uh, even ten years, uh, but certainly five years from now. Uh, I, it, it feels like it's built to last. And it's got more verdure in and more, the more verdure seems to come through on the finish, adding this slightly gamey earthiness. Not the gaminess that uh, is associated with uh, some certain wine faults, but I think that's uh, the character of more verdure in this particular soil. Let's see whether Vidal Fleury can trump that one. Uh, so it's a 2009 Cote de Rhone. Slightly different style here. This is warmer, rounder, uh, fleshier. If the first one was slightly upright and uh, svelte would be the wrong word, but uh, certainly uh, not uh, inclined to puppy fat. On this one, there is a little bit of tour de poitrine. There's a little bit of that thing where people do their buckle up and there's a little bit of bulge over the top. 
but it's got the gaminess, it's got the spice, it's got the herbs, and uh, it smells like it's going to be uh, more of a winter warmer than the, the one before at the moment, although it doesn't feel like it's maybe got the legs to last as well as the first one. Yeah, that's nice, juicy, hearty fare. Uh, that's the wine I'd be drinking tonight. The other one is the one that I'd be drinking um, in a couple of years. Both good, uh, both uh, really nice, <laughs> really, really, really good, actually. Um, and uh, gussy, uh, juicy, lots of power, but uh, power that's reined in. It's not trying to assault you and impress you with, uh, uh, with six-pack or cleavage or anything like that. These are, they, they, these are just nice, poised wines that are um, very food-friendly. It's very bring on the, the boar's head and stuff like that. And um, I'm not having boar's head, but someone maybe. We like that. Let's see whether we like uh, Carl St. Pierre Coudron Village. Um, Carl St. Pierre, now owned by Scally, which is now uh, owned by, I think, Boisse in, uh, in Burgundy, bought it recently. Uh, but this is Coudron Village, let's give it a whirl. Now, Coudron Village should be a step up in quality from Coudron, but to be honest, I've stick my nose in here and it smells like it's going to be a lighter. Um, fruitier, the simpler wine. Um, it feels like uh, someone has maybe held back on in, in terms of uh, uh, either ripeness of fruit or, and extraction of flavours. I'm not generally a, a fan of people sort of doing the mash your tea bag, mash your tea bag to get as much uh, flavour out as possible. But it feels like here they could have gone a little bit further to get a bit more body, a bit more tannin in. But that's only from the smell. Let's taste it. It's decent enough, but the previous two shame it. Um, it yeah, it doesn't have the concentration. It's got a bit of uh, freshness and it's more on that red berry edge uh, than the, the darker fruit flavours that you're getting here. Simpler, um, does have a bit of chewy tannin in there but um, maybe lacks a little bit of oomph. That's a really technical term. Let's see whether we get oomph in the Spaniards. Uh, we're going back to 2010 now with Artazuri Garnacha, uh, 2010 from Navarra. Now it's interesting, Grenache, Garnacha are either side of the border. I find that um, when, you, when you get to Grenache in Spain, there's uh, always this, what I call this Spanish dustiness about it. You can feel the warmth, you can feel the heat. Uh, and the Southern Rhone is also pretty, pretty hot. But uh, yeah, the, I, I think it's that dusty edge that, uh, uh, that, that marks it out as being Spanish. Here, I get that. It feels like it's going to be a, a, not incredibly full body, but there's this juiciness and warmth and again the heartiness. Um, I, I think if you miss out on heartiness on Grenache, then there's no point. I know someone grows it in Wales and you think, well, it's not exactly warm and hearty weather in, uh, even in the south of Wales, even in a good year. But here, uh, yes, it feels like it's not going to be a, a hugely complex wine, but quite satisfying. Let's see. Interesting. Um, it's, uh, I don't know whether it's to do with the screw cap, but uh, it's 2010. It still feels really backward. Um, there's almost a slight fizziness to the wine, uh, but there is also this uh, quite boisterous uh, juiciness and uh, it feels like um, it, where, where red fruit meets black fruit when you've got those things like loganberries and uh, ever so slightly underripe blackberries if you've, if you've ever gone picking blackberries on the hillsides and uh, got them just about a week too early and so there's that um, there's the, the fruit flavors have developed but there's a touch of greenness I get that touch of greenness here uh, and I but I, I wouldn't be surprised um, if I left that bottle open, uh, coming back to it tomorrow and seeing uh, a more uh, grown-up wine. At the moment, it's just a bit, um, yeah, young Tigger-like, not even grown-up Tigger. Um, it feels like, yeah, it's a wine that needs to, uh, uh, needs to emerge. It's good now, but I think there's a better wine still to emerge from that particular bottle. Yeah, that juicy, slight jamminess, but just the right side of jamminess. Um, good, but um, I still think like, the, the two Cote de Rhone's are the class act here. Let's see whether we can get a class act with uh, the final wine. It's uh, Sainsbury's Taste the Difference Priorat, 2008. And um, I think the dominant grape here is actually uh, Carignan, or as they call it in, in, in Spain, uh, Mazuelo. But there is some Garnacha in there. And a very different style here. This is much more uh, rich, ruddy, uh, very, very 
d dark, almost overripe style. Uh, you get this uh, intense skinniness. Uh, there, it, it feels like a much older wine than all the rest of them, even, even though it's just uh, one year older. And um, it feels like a more rustic wine. Is it, does rustic mean good? Sometimes rustic can mean good, sometimes rustic can mean old-fashioned. Here, there's, um, I don't know, I'm in two minds. There's a bit of the old-fashioned character, that oxidation, that slightly dried out uh, reasoning fruit, but also a uh, nice development. Let's see whether it, which one, I mean, I'm in two minds from the smell. Well, I know some people who absolutely love that. So that rounded, soft juiciness, uh, but with a, 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 a soft is a, soft is maybe the the wrong word. It's got a smoothness about it, but then this punch of fruit, smooth and soft. It's like being hit by a container load of Kleenex toilet roll. Um, and uh, but what I object to about it is I really wish that there was a little bit more freshness of fruit. I wish they'd got the instead of it being Carignan. And, um, and and ganache the other way around so because uh, Gren Grenache isn't a, isn't a grape that keeps its freshness well but here it's just bordering on that raisiny old Carignan style if you taste fitu slightly traditional fitu you get a very similar style of wine to that so good but not great uh, and uh, yeah for, for me the, the, the two two favorite wines are the, the uh, uh, these two Coderones so um, I'll be offering those to my wife tonight and saying, here you are, darling, Grenache, and hopefully she won't drink both bottles of them. I might help her. See you soon.